Hello everybody and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-16C Viper and today we're going to be taking a look at TACAN navigation and how to use it to get around town. Uh, a couple things I do want to tell you guys first before I get too far into that is if we go to our list and go into INS. Okay, when I told you guys about stored heading, I told you that when once you started the alignment you needed to make sure to hit enter on the latitude, dauber down to Longitude hit enter again to confirm the headings. In stored alignment, you do not have to do that. Okay, disregard that that was false. Okay, um, and then the other thing I told you is that you needed to make sure you entered in your elevation whenever you put in a waypoint. That way you get the diamond down on the ground. That is also incorrect. Um, I did not put an elevation down on this first waypoint out in front of us, and I still get the diamond on the ground directly beneath it. So that's actually pretty awesome. It draws a diamond down to the surface level no matter where your waypoint is, so you get both, which is pretty cool. All right, so just a little uh, tip there that I noticed. All right, now, before we start talking about tack hand, you do need to make sure that your mids LVT here is set to the on position. Without it, the tack hand will not work, and you'll get a giant off on the... Um, on the DED, which is, I wonder why, this was an air start aircraft, I wonder why the day leak is turned down, my understanding that it doesn't do anything in this aircraft for the Block 50, but anyway, alright, let's go ahead and make our DED a little brighter here, and let's turn that MFD up, oops, go the right way, it helps, okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is come down to our EHSI and do a left click here and there's a white flag that pops up that says BRT. As long as that's illuminated, you can mouse wheel up and it will increase the brightness. Let's click it again. It stays on for about three seconds, I think. And you can see there it says BRT for bright. All right. So we got a nice and bright uh, EHSI there. So now let's talk about how to set up the tack in. So the first thing we're going to want to do is get back to the CNI screen. All right, so we need to dauber left for the return, get back here. Then we're going to type TLS, TILS, for, or number one on the keypad there on the uh, UFC or ICP. And then now you can see that we have TACAN and ILS. So you have ILS that's currently turned on, and here's the frequency for the ILS station that's currently set. TACAN is currently set to receive. First thing is, if you want to change the mode, which we need to do, we need to be in transmit receive because we're going to go after Katasi today. Okay, we would just simply dauber over to the right to hit sequence and it will change the transmit receive and the same thing for air to air. Okay, transmit receive automatically gets activated. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to transmit receive and now let's come down to our channel. Now you see we have channel here and we have the band. Okay, we can change both, but the band can be a little tricky if you don't do it right, if you get ahead of yourself, I should say. So let's dauber down the channel. First, we want 4 4 and we need to hit enter before we worry about the band. So we're going to hit enter. Okay, you can see Beacon Katasi comes up, and that's great. But if we wanted to be on uh, Yankee after we hit enter and select our channel, then we want to hit zero and enter again, and it will change the band over to Yankee, and then just zero, enter again, and you go back to X-ray. So if you're ever in that condition, that's why. All right? So what I meant by make sure that you don't get ahead of yourself is don't go 4-4, four, four, you know, and then hit zero, because I just type a zero there. Okay? So anyway, let's do a recall, hit enter. There we go. All right, now that we have our TACAN station set up, let's come down here to the EHSI. First off, taking a spin around the block, first you have your distance to the currently selected uh, nav point, whether that be a TACAN station, in our case it's the waypoint, you can see we're 15.5 nautical miles. The blue arrow and the tail down here indicate your um, heading to the desired location and the reciprocal course, or your tail head. Okay, so if you ever see the tail up front here, you can see this little white hash line right in front of the blue arrow. Okay, that indicates the nose of the aircraft. So if you ever see the tail line here, up on here on the nose line, um, you're going the wrong way, right? And you'll also see your distance increasing. Then you have your course line, which allows you to adjust this blue bar right here that allows us to make sure not only that we are flying to a waypoint, but if you want to get to a waypoint on a specific course or heading, this is how you would arrange that. Okay, and then here we have the heading bug, which is used for the autopilot. All right, or if you want to just map a desired heading, you know that once this block gets to where you want to be, you're heading the right direction. Okay, so for example, if we were told to steer to 060 and we lost our HUD, we could simply take this guy right here, move it to the 060 position, and turn it until the nose line was in line with this, and we know we're on course. All right. Okay, so now let's talk about the, getting it into tack hand mode. So the first thing we're going to do is hit mode once. This is the M button, and that puts us into the ILS navigation. We don't want ILS 
tap it again and you can see TCN for TACAN, TCN for TACAN. Now we want to come to Katasi um, from the east and land on the runway. Okay, that's what we're simulating here. So let's go ahead and come down here to Katasi. And by the way, if you ever need to get an airfield's TACAN or ILS information, you can see the TACAN information right here um, and ILS right here. Okay. Now it's important to remember that not all airfields have it. So for example, if we were to come up north to Nalchik, for example, I know is one that doesn't have it. No TACAN information is available here. Okay, you have ILS, but you don't have TACAN. And only ILS is available on one runway. And so for example, same thing I think here with Katasi. ILS we only have available on runway 08, which actually I think is 07 on this. Oh, no, but 08. Okay, cool. So we would only have ILS coming in from the west landing to the east. Okay, so we're doing the opposite. So in this case, it's pretty handy that we're using the TACAN to try to get us on course for the runway before we actually make it to the airfield. All right, and this is handy. Um, this is great both in uh, VFR, so visual flight rules and instrument flight rules. So if you're flying in the dark, this is actually probably more handy than VFR, but they're both nice. Okay, oh, back to the FTM Act. So first thing we want to do is find out what the actual heading line is for the airfield. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my ruler here. This is how I do it. And I'm going to right click once, drag, and just make a straight line. doesn't have to be very long. And you can see we see 253 degrees. Now you always want to make sure that you draw the line from the direction your aircraft is going to be traveling. Okay, because if we do it this way, we get something completely different. We get 073, right? So you want to make sure that you're always coming in the same direction that your aircraft is going to be landing in. And it's right click and then right click again. Now, <clears throat> something I have noticed with using the ruler. The runways get their identification based on their magnetic heading. The aircraft is currently flying using a magnetic heading. I believe the ruler is using true heading. And the reason why I say that is because it's off by about 4 degrees. If we were to plug 253 degrees in for our attack end station, we would approach the um, runway sort of like this. Okay, that's a little dramatic. That's very severely extreme. But you'll come at it at an angle. You won't come down the true line of the runway. Okay, so what I've been doing and what I found works is there's about a four degree difference between true heading and magnetic heading. So what you can do is whenever you use your ruler, okay, take to the 253 degrees and then subtract four degrees. So we're going to be looking for 249 degrees on our, e, on our HSI. So now we're going to come to our course knob and we're going to roll it back until we see 249 degrees. Okay. All right. So now, information has changed a bit here. So first off, you, this is our TO indicator. Let lets you know if you're heading to or from your desired TAC and the station, okay, and uh, or course line. So you can see that currently it shows the arrow pointing off to the right, okay, and this will change based on what direction you're heading. I don't really use this very much, but it can be handy for some. Okay, again, we can see where our TAC and station is, but we want to make sure we're approaching the course line correct. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep flying straight until this guy here, the pointer to our attack can, gets closer to our 9 o'clock. Okay, this is our 3-9 line. Okay, so this is 3 o'clock, this is 9 o'clock, 3-9 line is what we call it. And so as it gets closer to our 3 o'clock, you'll see that this line starts to approach the aircraft much, much faster the closer this gets. Okay, when it gets to about here, we want to start turning on to our course line. And this is all based on how fast you're traveling when it comes down to it. So you're just going to have to play around with it and get used to how quickly it drops, etc. But the one thing that will remain constant is once this hits your, nine, your 3 or 9 o'clock line, this line is going to come at you very, very quickly. Okay, because it means you're right on it. So anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to wait for this to get closer. Once this line starts to come at us, we're going to turn left. And the idea is we're going to have this, basically everything that's blue here, making one solid straight nine from our nose line here down to the bottom. And if we nail this correctly, um, we will be on darn near perfect lineup for the runway using just the tack end. Okay, now what we don't want to happen is we don't want this blue arrow to fall behind the 3-9 line. If it does, that means we've passed our tack end station. Okay, so we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure it stays either on or in front of our 3-9 line and then we want to turn on the course before it actually before the course line passes us. All right, so let's see what this all looks like in action. So I'm going to unpause here, get us back out a little bit here, and off we go. Let's see if I can make a complete fool of myself or not. And I'm already going to start turning because you can see the arrows for our course 
for the course that we want to fly. There we go. That's getting better. There. So now we're coming straight at it. So we're just going to sort of level her out at this point. We should start descending just a little bit. And I'm just watching that blue line, our course line here. I'm watching this line right here as it comes closer and closer, watching with the arrow, and just sort of watch the reference. As this gets closer to that 9 o'clock line, watch how fast this starts to drop. And you can see we're about 18 miles away from the airfield itself. Alright, see, so now it's starting to come at us pretty quick. I'm going to start turning. Because I don't want to overshoot it. Now we're going to try to line them all up. I'm sort of reducing my turn as they start to line up. Pretty darn close there. Start descending again. And now we're just going to watch it. There's a little deviation, so it's we're sort of on the right side of our course line. So I'm going to come left just a hair. Hush. As we steer left, our tack hand indication is also going to the right. So we're going to have to correct for that as well. So now steering back to line everything up. There we go. It's drifting left just a little bit. And I'm trying just to sense so you guys can see the relationship of the runway as we pass over. Like I said, it's not perfect. It's not picture perfect because the tack hand station isn't actually on the runway. But if we steer to the right just a little bit. So we still came at it at a little bit of an angle. So we probably could have uh, moved it just a little bit. But there we go. We are flying over Katasi Airfield. And it still helped us line up with the general direction of the runway. I mean, that would have been a... I mean, look. That's basically what our correction would have needed to be to line up with the, uh, with the airfield once it was in sight. All right. So that's really the basics of flying um, uh, tack hand navigation. There really isn't a whole lot to it. It's a very nicely done system in the 16. Real quick, just to show you guys, if you did want to go to a tanker, we would just simply come here, hit 7-1 for our, our tanker, okay, and then change our, seek, or our mode to air to air. And once again, we get the same indication. There he is right there, okay? So we can just turn the aircraft around. All right, guys, so you can see here that you've got our blue arrow here. We're about five and a half nautical miles away from our tanker, and there he is. I hope you guys can see him. Okay? So, again, that is the basics of tack and navigation. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Stand by for the next one where we'll go over landing with both with and without ILS support, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great week, guys.